So you want to get into brewing and you're looking up and down the internet for recipes, well look no further than this video, you braj. See, we've been in the game for a long time. We've made a lot of great recipes. We've also made a lot of not so great recipes. A lot of recipes we're proud of. A lot of recipes we're not so proud of. We've come across other home brewers. We've come across other commercial brewers. We've got brages and we've got brajets. We even made a dill pickle sour. We've used about every ingredient that could possibly go into a beer. We've done it all. And I wanted to make this video because last brew day was the first time in my life I've ever thrown out a batch of beer before I kegged it or bottled it. Not all batches of beer are all ass and titties. So I wanted to talk about some recipes that were absolutely delicious. Beers that make you want to enter competitions. Beers that make you want to open up your own brewery. See, when people first get into brewing, they have this decision. Do I start all grain or do I go extract? I'm all for just starting all grain. Make some darker ales like browns and stouts and ambers. Darker ales are more forgiving and beginning brewers get frustrated that they're first few batches are too cloudy. So go with the darker beer since the color will hide the murkiness better. Once you get your system dialed in and a few batches down, make some clone beers of your favorite commercial beers. We used to do that all the time. A lot of breweries post their recipes online, so follow their recipes and then go ahead and do some blind taste tests with some friends. It's a really good feeling to confuse your homebrew with the popular stuff they sell all over the nation. Then after you start gaining some confidence with your homebrewing, start honing in recipes and really experimenting. So without Without further ado, these are the top five easiest and best recipes that we recommend from our channel over the past five years. And all these recipes will be linked in the comment section below. Number five, Cinnamon Toast Crunch Stout. This is a more recent recipe and it's always fun to brew with cereal. First and foremost, do not run cereal through a mill. It's never worked for me. Keep it to just grain and rice holes. This is a stout, so you don't need to worry about using any gelatin or vegan gelatin. All of the ingredients are accessible and you get to play around with lactose and cinnamon. This recipe also only requires two ounces of hops, which will keep your wallet happy. When I first started brewing, it was all about IPAs, which are extremely expensive if you're buying hops by the ounce. A good rule of thumb is to keep your first few batches of beer under four ounces of hops or less. If you spend 30 bucks or 50 bucks on hops for a five gallon batch and the batch turns out like trash, it's going to burn you out on home brewing. It's my job to keep people from getting burned out on home brewing. That's my purpose in life. That's why I was born. This was also right at the time when I heard that Omega was putting this yeast in dry form. So I was able to get it off Amazon without having to worry about paying for the expensive overnight shipping for liquid yeast. There's no dry hopping, so you're drinking beer a lot faster. Longer fermentations can be a turnoff. And we were drinking this beer within a couple of days. This beer turned out perfect. It's quick yeast, so you can relax more with temperature control. And I recommend it all around for anybody who enjoys malty beers. Number four, Pink Starburst Hazy IPA. This was the last batch of beer I brewed before leaving San Diego and moving to Knoxville, Tennessee. We shot it at my buddy's brewery in South Oceanside, California. California called South O Brewing. Imagine that. This video is a great introduction to hazies and we used another quite dry yeast, but this time we used Voss, which is also available on Amazon, Northern Brewer, and probably everywhere else that sells yeast. The majority of the grain bill is two row and flaked oats, but it's also got some honey and wheat malt to add some sweetness to the beer. I was on a roll with dry Kavike yeast at this time. It was the only yeast I was using and this beer turned out exactly how I planned it through my head. I highly recommend this batch to anybody who likes hazies beginners, pros, grandpas, grandmas, anybody who's into hazy IPAs. Number three. Okay, plot twist. This isn't a beer. It's a trend I thought would only last a week, but I was wrong. Years later, it's still here to stay. I was having a tough time with hard seltzers and I didn't get it right until my fifth attempt. First couple of times I attempted a hard seltzer, I'd get stuck fermentation and or the wort or sugar water would always turn yellow, kind of like piss. So I started using distilled water. Distilled water is distilled. That means it's transferred into another carboy of some sort while leaving all the minerals behind. It tastes nothing like bottled water. It tastes nothing like tap water. It just tastes like nothing. You're gonna learn about beer salts following this recipe. Beer salts and yeast nutrient. And the key to this is using a ton of yeast nutrient, one ounce per batch. That's a lot since generally you're only going by grams for five gallon batches. I did three batches side by side and used three different yeasts. And the batch with the liquid omega quite turned out the clearest and the best tasting. Just be very light with the extracts you're using. Less is more with these things. Go with some something citrus like lime or lemon. I tried using vanilla and chocolate before and it was gross. Number two, peachy ringstein kettle sour. I was hesitant to put this recipe on the list because it is a kettle sour, which requires an electric brewing system, but it seems like almost everybody has one these days. It's a kettle sour, so it requires two boils and two chills. There's been more than a few times where we have kegged off a five gallon batch and drank it all in the same day. And this was definitely one of those batches. If I had a brewery, this would be first on my list outside of 
Hazy and West Coast IPAs. Puree is about 20 bucks, maybe 25 tops, but it's well worth it. Flash fruit peaches. And we were fortunate to find a mango flavored Good Belly, which is the lactobacillus that brings the pH down in the wort to quick sour a batch, AKA kettle sour. I have no clue if the mango worked or it's all just marketing, but hey, peace of mind, I guess. If you have an electric system or you're comfortable with the Philly sour yeast or maybe something I don't know about, then I highly recommend this batch. We did this right when the kettle sour haze was going full force and this beer turned out perfect. Sometimes recipes ain't that good. Sometimes you want to hone them in and sometimes you just nail it the first time. And before I talk about the number one beer we brewed, the number one beer on this channel, I want to talk about a couple of recipes of ours you shouldn't make. We tried a maple bacon beer one time and it was pretty gross. I'm not saying don't make this style, I'm just saying don't follow our recipe. The extract tasted nothing at all like maple or bacon and I would have just used actual maple or bacon if I were to do this again. I did ferment too hot so the off flavors in this beer were really going to stand out. I let it sit in a corny keg for 10 days thinking the off flavors would go away. Sometimes it does if you get lucky and this did not. Don't follow this recipe. It's gross. <laughs> And another one of our recipes that's kind of hit or miss is our smoked beer. Rausch beer, Rausch beer. This is a very niche German style. This beer tasted exactly like a smoked beer, but the problem was that nobody wanted to drink more than a half pint of it. If you want to experiment with this beer, maybe do a half batch, maybe just a one gallon. Do not do a five gallon batch unless you really like smoky beer, or maybe you want to bottle it. But other than that, be wary. And also check out our live stream where we talk about things like this and everything beer all the time. Link in the description. Let me no. Number one. Orange Creamsicle. Orange is the new barrage. Call this beer a hazy. Call this beer a milkshake IPA. Call it whatever you want. Just know that it is delicious. Here's the deal. It's super easy to make, but this video is super old, so the production is cringe as hell. It's tough to watch. <sighs> Mondo, take us home. Don't hey. be nervous. Thanks or for smile. <laughs> you done? <laughs> Thanks for watching. But snag the recipe in the description of that video. We use candied sweet orange peel, lactose, vanilla beans. This was when vanilla beans were super expensive. They're much cheaper now. I brewed this beer with my buddy Chris from Battle Mage Brewery in Vista. He's the owner. He was the barrage who got me into brewing as well. I've had multiple people reach out to me over the years and let me know that they've brewed this batch multiple times. And if you guys want to see a recipe or want to recommend anything, then leave it in the comment section. I read all the comments every morning when I'm in my personal library. Hopefully this video helped out. Hopefully you could use a recipe. These are my top five recipes. And if you're kind of weary about brewing or getting to brewing i'd brew one two and five i'm sorry five four and one cinnamon toast pink starburst hazy and orange is the new barrage thank you for watching this week's video thank you for letting us waste your time cheers to eating good and cheers to eating good you barrage